for technology. Am I only just heard? Do I need to say that again? Yes, I do need to say that again. Right. <laughs> well, my name is still Giles, as it was a moment ago. And I'm still married to Sarah, who is still intending to read the reading to us uh, a little later on when we come to Psalm 128. Uh, we are fairly new here, as I was saying. So if you are new as well, then you and I will get on particularly well. But whoever you are, it's lovely to have everybody here. Um, and uh, welcome to those, of course, joining uh, by the wonders of uh, screens. It's great to begin with a hymn this afternoon. Some hymns inevitably drop by the wayside. Uh, here is one which never has, has been sung by God's people for centuries uh, and continues to be so for very good reasons. It's a wonderful declaration of the greatness and goodness of God as experienced by his people down the ages. So, come all who hear, brothers and sisters draw near, praise him in glad adoration. <laughs> take a seat. It's lovely to begin on that note of praise, and we will uh, be continuing to think as the service goes on on the theme of uh, God's great blessing on his people, on those who follow him in the Lord Jesus. Now, a few things to say before I hand over to Pete, who's going to lead our prayers. First is uh, a repeat to, to uh, newcomers. Um, if you're new, we're warmly encouraged to fill in a blue card. There are a number of blue cards I can see dotted around uh, on seats. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to visit, uh, to, to fill in one of those and hand it in afterwards. Uh, or to visit uh, the website stag.org, um, stroke new. So do, uh, if you'd like to be known, we don't want to miss you. So do uh, please uh, act on one of those. And if you are new here and in your 20s and 30s, well, I'm sure you don't have to be new, just in your 20s and 30s. But if you are new, you're welcome to join others who are going off uh, to find some food after the service, led, I think, by Giorgio and Anna. So where are you off to? Some exotic spot. Yeah, I think we're probably going to go to Nando's, although if there's a job lot of vegans, we may change our mind. Um, 
but this is mainly so you know what we look like. So come and find us on Christ Pieces at 6.30, and we'll be heading off somewhere to have dinner. How do we get to Christ Pieces? Uh, follow everyone else, but it's kind of roughly that way. <laughs> roughly that way. Okay. Over there, across the road, and uh, yeah, fine. Thank you for that. Uh, also, to say a couple of other things, uh, there will be a prayer meeting again this Wednesday, uh, just here in the church building at 8 o'clock for an hour for those who are able to come. And the building, I'm told, will be open from 7.50 uh, this Wednesday. So you're very welcome if you can come to that. It'd be lovely to have you. And the fourth thing to say is that uh, David and Katie warmly invite you to their wedding celebration here, which I'm pretty sure is half past 11 next Saturday. Nobody's contradicting me. So I think 11.30 next Saturday morning, you're very welcome to come and be a part of their uh, celebration uh, at that time. So, Pete, come and lead our prayers. Thank you. Thanks, Giles. Um, this evening, we're going to be praying for our mission partners, Paul and B. Min Holland. Their photos on the screen now. They're based at Gateway Church in Singapore, which is a church plant. Um, Paul is a former member of St. Andrew the Great. Um, but first, we're going to do what we always do at the beginning of our prayer time. We're going to take some time to consider the ways we've turned away from the Lord Jesus this week and return to him in confession and repentance. Um, Psalm 123 tells us that the blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. And so it's right and good that we reorientate our hearts towards him now to help us fear him more, walk in obedience to him better, and therefore know his spiritual blessings more abundantly and more intimately. So, together. Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We confess the sins that we have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed your commands, decrees, and laws. We thank you that through the death of your son, Jesus, you forgive us and will gather us from the farthest horizon to be with you forever in your perfect dwelling place. Amen. The Apostle Peter, in his first letter to the churches in Asia, reminds us that he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And by his wounds you have been healed. Loving Father, thank you so much that you have provided us a way to die to sins through the Lord Jesus, that you would give up your beloved Son out of your great love for us. We thank you that our set-asideness to live for righteousness is just as accomplished as our redemption from sin. And we pray that all of us would live out that great calling more this week than we did last week. Loving Father, we pray for all those receiving A-level and B-tech grades on Tuesday and GCSE grades on Thursday. For those who've not done well, we for those who have done well, we pray for good times of celebration. For those who haven't done as well as they hoped, we pray that you, the God of comfort, would use others well, and especially Christians, as a tool for comfort. For the nervous and anxious, we pray that you would calm nerves and pray that Christian students will be able to testify that they experience some relief from your peace which transcends all understanding. We pray, Father, that Christian pupils and parents will be distinctive in how they receive their grades, how they think about their future, and how they go about talking to their friends. We pray that the world will be wowed by their humility, their calmness, and their focus on our life yet to come. Father, we pray too for the political situation in Belarus, with operation to Lukashenko's government increasingly repressed. We pray for the friends and families of those who've lost loved ones. Please comfort them in a time of sadness. Father, we pray for Christians in Belarus to continue to be bold in living out their faith and discipling one another 
in a country where it is illegal to read the Bible in one's own home. We also pray that churches in Belarus will be full of joy for you, a deep and genuine love and knowledge of your word, and will be outward looking too. Father, gospel heart transformation of your people has often led to political transformation throughout the history of your church. We pray that something similar would happen in Belarus. And Father, we do pray for Paul and Beam in Holland and Singapore. Thank you for sustaining Gateway Church through the latest tightened COVID restrictions there. Thank you for enabling them to continue to have scaled down in-person meetings as well as small group gatherings. We pray for wisdom and unity for the church family as they gradually scale up meetings over the coming months. And we do pray for two new elders at the church, Damien Sin and Michael Chan. We pray that together with Paul, they will be a united team leading and teaching the church with integrity, faithfulness, and wisdom. We're going to finish with the collect, the Church of England set prayer for today. Let your merciful ears, Lord God, be open to the prayers of your people, and so that we may obtain our permissions, our petitions, teach us to ask for those things that please you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Peace. I'm going to continue with uh, uh, two songs, the first of which is uh, another hymn which has stood the test of time. Uh, the goodness and greatness of God, of which we sang at the beginning, are nowhere seen more clearly than at the cross. It's been said that a, a glance at the cross is enough to save us, but it's the gaze at the cross which sanctifies us. And so we survey and sing of surveying the wondrous cross. And that reminds us that we are debtors to God's mercy and that alone. And that's the theme of the song which follows. And after these two songs, for which we now stand, uh, Sarah will bring the Bible reading to us.
got a red one, there are more at the back, um, it's page 624, we want Psalm 128, page 624, and Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labour Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots round your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. And shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for your promise that your word does not return to you empty, but accomplishes all that you intend for it to do. And we come humbly now, conscious of our need for your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts and lives to conform us to the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we pray for Ben that he may preach faithfully and clearly as we look together at this psalm. Teach us what it means to fear you 
and to walk in obedience to you all the days of our life. And gladden our hearts, we pray, as we consider afresh the blessings we have in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for reading for us. Um, I'm Ben. I primarily serve the undergraduate students here, and I make up the numbers in the summer when all the usual preaching staff are away. Um, the psalm read for us, in one sense, is very simple. It's about the blessings that God gives to those who belong to him. And that idea is explicit in verse 1 and verse 4. Verse 1, blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. And verse 4, yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. And so this evening, for the next 20 minutes or so, we'll consider the blessing of God. In my mind, naturally, blessing is a vague term. Hey, you know, people who put it on the bottom of cards when they say God bless or on a Facebook message or something, I think, oh, that's very Christian of you. Um, but really, I don't read any more into it than if it just said yours sincerely or love from. Um, it's a vague term to me. And perhaps next time I get a card that says that, I should be confrontational. I should write back and say, that dear Godmother, she's one of the few people who I know still writes God bless on cards. Um, nice to hear that the garden's going uh, well, and um, I was just wondering about that bit at the end where you said, God bless, just what exactly should I be expecting? Um, what should I be looking forward to in the next year? And um, what is this blessing going to look like? Um, love for our man, God bless, Benjamin. <laughs> and yet, the singers of our psalm have a very, very clear answer to that question. We've been looking through these songs of ascent, and if you've been coming, you'll have heard this every single week. They're songs that the pilgrims sang as they went up to Jerusalem. As they went up to one of the great feasts, these are the songs they sang. And as they looked forward to a time of blessing, they knew exactly what they were looking forward to. Um, it's in verse 2 and verse 3. Uh, they sing this, they say, You will eat the fruit of your labour. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. Like I say, it's very straightforward. They're singing of the good life. Uh, we may think it's simplistic and old-fashioned to think that the good life comprises of eating the uh, labour and the fruit of your labour and having a family, um, but it is the good life for them nonetheless. And I think the first thing to note is it's very tangible and they are very sure of what it looks like. Um, and maybe that's a little challenge to us. I think it's possible, isn't it, to only believe that God is involved in the kind of spiritual elements of our life. And God's into mercy and forgiveness, but he's not really into anything we can see or touch or anything like that. I recently read this book that I heartily recommend. It's called God of All Things. It's definitely the most fun Christian book I've ever read. It's by Andrew Wilson, and it's wonderful summer reading, and it encourages us just to understand that God is actually involved in his world. He is really involved, and he gives us many good things. The Israelites, though, clearly had no such issues. They knew this. They knew the covenant God um, deeply involved and gives good things like family and work. Things that we should acknowledge come from our Father's hand. I've recently got back from a family holiday with uh, my side of the family. Um, and I think it was a blessing. It's a good thing, isn't it, to spend time with family, even though there's frustrations and there's tensions as the screaming babies all night. Um, but it is a wonderful thing to have a family, um, a wonderful thing to spend time with a family. And I'm sure there's people here for whom that is very painful. Um, it's years and years of not talking to different siblings. Um, maybe it's people who have passed away. And could it be the reason why it's so painful, why family disruption is so painful, is because it's supposed to be so good. And that it is such a good thing at its heart. And we have to just note what it says. That it is a good vocation for man and woman to have children together. There are very few voices in our culture which will tell us that. Family and then work. Until recently, I knew um, absolutely nothing about farming. I'm from inner city London. Um, I've basically always lived in cities. But fortunately, Jeff Bezos commissioned uh, Jeremy Clarkson to film the life on his farm um, on Amazon Prime. And so about three episodes in, I still know very little about farming. Um, but it has helped me to see a little bit of the blessing of eating the labour of your hands, eating the fruit of your labour. Uh, God has to be very kind for that to be the case. 
Um, like I say, I don't know a lot, but the rain and the sunshine have to be in roughly the right proportions. Otherwise, there won't be a harvest. There need to be no insects who come and just destroy all your crops. Um, it must be very, very frustrating when those things happen. Um, it was for Jeremy Clarkson. I'm sure it was also for God's ancient people. Uh, the blessing then in verse 2 and 3. You will eat the fruit of your labour. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. And so in a sense, that's it. That's the blessing being sung about. And uh, to the extent that we enjoy those things, we ought to be grateful for them. We ought to give thanks for them. And yet there must be more going on in this psalm. Uh, you see, there are plenty of people, I'm sure you know plenty of people, who enjoy those things in verse 2 and 3 uh, with absolutely no regard for verse 1 and 4. Uh, people who seemingly enjoy the fruit of their labour, who are seemingly blessed and prosperous, who have a happy family situation, and yet have no regard for the Lord. Uh, remember verse 1 and 4 that sandwich those blessings. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. God does send the rain on good and evil alike. But how can this be? How can this be that the, the pilgrims can sing of these blessings as particular things for those who fear the Lord? Well, before we get to something of an answer, just um, it's worth clarifying what we mean by fear of the Lord. Think less of a child who's terrified about a monster under their bed and more of a child who has awe and reverence for their father. Uh, fear in the Bible leads to worship, it leads to obedience. And perhaps most of all, it leads to a casting out of all other fears. Now, remember the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 12, uh, when he teaches about fear. He says, do not fear the sorts of things that everyone else fears. Uh, fear your heavenly father. Good fear. And so there's only one thing I want us to see from this psalm, really. And it's this, that the blessing for the one who fears the Lord endures. The blessing for the one who fears the Lord endures. And I hope that will answer our question. Now let's see this from a couple of different vantage points. Across the psalm, the blessing that is being sung of has longevity. I wonder if you noticed that. And um, that the Israelites are singing of the good life and not just the good weekend. Um, to eat the fruit of your labour is a state of life. It is to have a job. It is ha to have successful harvests. It's uh, not having to worry about how you're going to put food on the table for you and your family. It is a comment on the general life of a blessed man who fears the Lord's. To have a family where you can use words like fruitful and describe children as olive shoots takes time at 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Apparently olive trees can keep producing fruit for up to a thousand years. They look old and they look gnarly and that is the blessing for those who fear the Lord. That is the blessing that these pilgrims are singing of. And we see it in verse 4 and verse 5 as well. I'm sorry, verse 5 and verse 6. Uh, this doesn't really need any explanation. It says, may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. The blessing endures. That is what makes these people, as they walk up Jerusalem, that is what they are rejoicing in. And perhaps we need to learn to be the same. Uh, learn to be see people who don't just settle for fleeting pleasures uh, that this world offers us, but long for that which endures. But why do they endure? Well, I think it's because these blessings aren't random. I think it's because these blessings mark an end to the curse for God's people. The reason why the pilgrims sing of a time of perpetual blessing, and not just a good weekend or a nice week away, is because they sing of blessings that indicate that life under the curse for God's people is over. A few months ago, or even a few weeks ago, we were reading the Ten Commandments in our morning series. And at the end of the book of the law, Moses, he stands up and he says to the people, if you obey these words, these things will happen. And if you don't obey these words, essentially you'll be sent into exile. Here's some of those words from Deuteronomy chapter 28. Um, I'll read from verse 38. Moses says this, You will sow much seed in the field, but you will harvest little, because locusts will devour it. You will plant vineyards and cultivate them, but you will not drink the wine or gather the grapes, because worms will eat them. You will have olive trees throughout your country, but you will not use the oil, because the olives will drop off. You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them, because they will go off into captivity. Elsewhere in the chapter, he talks of marriages being frustrated and broken. 
In fact, so much of that chapter is focused on the land and the family dynamic being broken. It is the complete opposite of Psalm 128. The pilgrims, they sing of an end to exile, an end to this experience. I was at Cambridge and ITed yesterday with uh, 6,000 of the other faithful people who were going to the Abbey Stadium, talked to them at uh, Jaw with Oxford. Um, and people were singing very, very loudly and um, before kickoff and all um, through the game. And in part, that was because it was an end to their exile. They hadn't been allowed to go through those turnstiles for 18 months or something. And so their hearts rejoiced when they could do it again. It is the majority view that these psalms are compiled after the exile, after the people have come back. And so they sing of an experience that is light years away from what they have just gone through, that is completely different. These are people who have lived through the pain that was promised in Deuteronomy 28. And so they sing of blessing and not curse, knowing all the heartache of the alternative. And they encourage each other then to not make the same mistakes again. You see, you cannot enjoy the blessing of eating the fruit of your labour when enemy nations are burning your fields and pillaging your barns, uh, even less as they take your family from around the dining room table. I was chatting with someone recently, maybe one of the most remarkable conversations I've ever had in my life. Uh, and this um, young man shared with me that uh, he can vividly remember a time when he was eating dinner with his family and the militia came in the door and killed his uncle uh, at the dining room table. Uh, that is the horror of life in a broken world. Uh, our eyes may not see that sort of thing, but there are plenty of eyes that do, and God's people had. And so, of course, they sing, that they sing of perpetual blessing. They long for it. They trust that their faithful God can provide it for them. That in the end, God will bless those who fear him. We are not Israel. Um, but the story of Israel, the story of God's people, is a microcosm uh, of the story of all people. Uh, think back to those early chapters in Genesis. If you don't know them well, um, there are compelling chapters at the very beginning of the Bible that offer an explanation for life in this world. I encourage you to read them. And in Genesis chapter 3, uh, God banishes Adam and Eve from his presence. And um, the relationship between God and humanity is broken. And I wonder if you can remember the particular things uh, that God says to Adam and Eve. Uh, he curses work and he curses childbearing. And as always, what God says proves very reliable. It is the testament of millions, perhaps billions, that those two things are hard. Uh, work is hard, it is frustrating. Uh, childbearing is so often very, very painful uh, throughout the whole process for many, many people. And now what do we find? We find a group of God's people, a small group of God's people heading to Jerusalem, singing of a time uh, of the blessing of family, and of eating the labour, the fruit of your labour. That is a picture of what God is doing in this world. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and who walk in obedience to him. God has committed himself to undoing that curse and to completely changing the experience of his people. And of course it endures. If, if the curse is gone, if you like, we're back to the status quo. We're back to exactly how it should be. People fearing God, obeying, doing what he says. And so there is blessing. If you're just looking in on things, I wonder if you realise that that's true of the God of the universe. But in his heart, he is good. And so we come to ask the question then that we've asked throughout this series, which is how is it that we can sing this song? How is it that we can sing these words? I want to suggest two ways. And the first is that we sing this as those who fear the Lord. And blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who love the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. It is a good thing to be a Christian. Like the pilgrims, we should be those who trace all good things back to our Father. Uh, summer is often a time of good things. Many of us would be able to enjoy uh, summer days and going away to see different parts of the country. Praise the Lord, give thanks to him. And if you're able to, praise him for work and for family. And yet primarily the good that is promised to us um, is not bound to this world. I mean, it's interesting that when the Lord Jesus talks about fear, one of the things he says is uh, that fear will lead you to give up worldly possessions and seek the kingdom. 
I wonder if you noticed that in verse 5 and 6, we haven't spent loads of time looking at them, but the pilgrims, they tie blessing very, very closely to Jerusalem and to the land of Israel. Uh, they're right to do that. Um, if they're going to have the good life, then Jerusalem needs to prosper. Our blessings are also tied to a Jerusalem. Um, is the Jerusalem that Paul refers to in Galatians 3, the Jerusalem that is above where Christ is. That is the only true city of peace, the security and ultimate blessing for God's people. And so as we join in this song, we sing of a future experience of that place, an encouragement to continue to walk in fear and obedience of the Lord this week. And incidentally, that is a good blessing to pray for someone if you put God bless on the end of a card. And perhaps when you just do that, you're not even thinking about it. Send up a little prayer um, for that person you're writing to, that they too would be blessed by God, that they would be uh, enjoying life in the new Jerusalem. So we sing it as those who fear the Lord. But I think we also sing this song as olive shoots. And that's just taking the language from verse 3. We sing this psalm as children of God, those who are gathered round the Lord Jesus Christ at his table with a family now and a family forever. The psalm paints a picture of the blessing overflowing. I wonder if you notice that, that it's blessed are all those who fear the Lord. And there's all these other people included in the psalm. All these other children, that the blessing for this one man overflows. That God is like that. His mercy and goodness overflow to his people. And as such then, we're caught up in the blessing that is only duly Christ's. As the Father gives Christ a vast multitude of his children from every nation, and the Father gives you to Christ. And therefore you bear the family resemblance. You too walk in fear and obedience of the Lord. And so the picture in verse 2 and 3 becomes vivid to us. And it becomes a painting of us. A picture of the people of God gathered at the banqueting table for all time. As we become increasingly like the Lord Jesus. It's not a one-off meal. It is an enduring blessing. It is a snapshot of the life that we currently eat in crumbs. Uh, we currently have a taste of it. If you've been a Christian any length of time, I hope that you've tasted crumbs of this blessing of God. We have much to be thankful for. But we sing this psalm as those who look forward to this blessing enduring. It's holiday season, isn't it? I wonder if you're one of those people, I'm a bit like this, where the whole holiday I'm kind of fighting this little voice in my head that's saying, oh, it's going to end. Uh, so much so that looking forward to the holiday almost becomes better than the holiday itself because on holiday you're just thinking, oh, I've got all those things to do, try and check my emails and that sort of thing. Well, God's goodness to those who fear him endures. We will eat at the table of Christ forever. So perhaps um, remember that as you're driving home on the A14 back to Cambridge after your holiday, that the blessing of the Lord endures. And remember it, perhaps even sing of it. Sing of the goodness of our Lord. The blessing really does endure shall I pray as we close Heavenly Father we praise you for your goodness to us for all the blessings that you give to us your people for the kindness of summer days and families above all though we praise you for giving us your son that we may partake in the blessings that are only by nature his and we pray that the reality of long-lasting, enduring, eternal blessings from your hand would cause us to sing your praises as we follow Christ through this life. For his glory. Amen. Well, we have two songs to sing as we draw to a close. Uh, celebrating God's word in the first and God's faithfulness in the second. And of course, those two things are uh, intricately linked. Uh, his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, as we will sing. And that is our experience, the experience of his faithfulness down the years, knowing his blessing as we've been hearing uh, the blessing of those who fear the Lord and who live as servants of Jesus. So two songs to sing. May we stand. Oh,
Would you like to sit? Just uh, a reminder that uh, Giorgio and Anna and others joining them will be on Christ's Pieces in about half an hour. Does that make sense? About quarter to 20 past six, so do join them. Or even if you don't want to go off for a meal, uh, others will be gathering uh, on Christ's Pieces, assuming it's not raining, which I think it seems not to be at the moment. Let's just pray for a moment before we wend our way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the things of which we've heard in your precious word. We thank you for the things of which we have sung from your word. We thank you for pardon for sin and a peace that endures, strength for today, and bright hope for tomorrow. These and other blessings beside, we thank you for them so much and pray that this may be a week in which we walk in the fear of the Lord and enjoy your blessing upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe. 